Oh, what's going on? Everyone hates Tesla. More power, more power. So if you didn't know, the second quarter of 2024, we got the information and I'm going to bring it up. Everybody else is talking about autonomous. They're talking about the deliveries, which is great, right? The delivery of the EVs. But what I want to highlight and watch over on this video, it's all about those batteries, baby. So as you can see, Austin, Texas, July 2nd, 2024, uh, yeah, here we go. In the second quarter, we produced approximately 411K vehicles and delivered approximately 444K vehicles. We deployed 9.4 GWH of energy storage products in the second quarter, the highest quarterly deployment yet. So that's amazing. And that's what we're going to be talking about on this video. We're going to actually have an interview with the man in charge, the man on the ground. As leading at that mega factory in California. Let's get into it. Let's get active. And here's what he has to say, because I think the energy department is something that's going to be one of the major, major sectors for Tesla in the future. And so a lot of people are talking about full self-driving right now and talking about the delivery of the EVs. And that's great, too. But we had a great quarter with energy. And I want to highlight that. And I want to highlight it also by backing it up with some detailed information so you guys can get into the actual details about the factory, which makes these factories beneficial. It's going to increase the company's ability to produce more batteries. And also we have one opening up in Shanghai, but it's still under construction. So we're going to focus our one on California. Here in the city of Lathrop. And so representing uh, the uh, Tesla brand today um, in the Lathrop facility is a plant manager, uh, Javier uh, Corral. Um, and so Javier, we're happy to have you here. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the introduction, Paul. I was super excited to have you here at the Mega Factory. Is this your first time at Tesla? This is the first time, yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you really enjoyed the tour uh, across the Mega Factory and looking forward to have this meaningful conversation. As Let's get it. Woo, woo, woo. First time we got a virgin on deck. Let's go. As am, as am I. Um, so um, obviously you guys were very uh, generous on uh, letting us uh, get a tour and a peek, a uh, sneak preview, if you will, into some of the things that you guys are doing here um, at the Mega Factory. Tesla is obviously very well known um, for a number of different things. You know, even social media, I know Elon Musk has um, delve into that one in the past couple of years, I believe, um, uh, purchasing Twitter. And then obviously it's now uh, called X. Um, but um, energy storage, um, and, you know, is what you guys do here. Um, again, I know you guys were kind enough to give us a tour here today. And so we know definitely a, lot, a little bit more about what you guys do um, here at the Mega Factory here in Lathrop. But for our audience, uh, would you be able to kind of, I don't know, maybe in a couple of minutes or so, kind of just tell our audience what it is that you guys do here exactly at Lathrop? Absolutely. And then we're going to get into it. But guys, this is what I want you to hear and understand that there's other aspects to Tesla's business besides EV cars and potentially a robo taxi. I want us to kind of dive in a little bit to understand the energy department and see what they have to offer. And I think this is the best place to start. So let's get that information. That's a great question. So uh, here at the Latro facility, we make the mega pack to Excel. Um, this is basically a storage battery uh, that saves energy. So the way that I will describe the Megapack is a solution that, that we are building. It's not only the product of the Megapack and, and basically having that energy storage, it's all the solution that works around the Megapack. Uh, one of the main benefits of the Megapack is the product, but as well, how, what are all the projects that we drive through the customers to ensure that it's easy to install, it performs uh, at the expectation of the, of the customer, and making sure that as well, we provide all the service that are required to maintain the, the mega pack, uh, which honestly the service that is required is minimum. It's more about monitoring and keeping that close loop with the customer experience. Because as we continue evolving as a, as a company, as a business, we always want to get that feedback loop from the customers to, to continue improving and innovating in this aspect. That's good. No, thank you for that. So um, one of the mega factory, um, I know you guys have a, um, a facility that does, or at least in the same business, um, in Sparks, Nevada, correct? Mm -hmm. But this is obviously a mega of what you guys do over there in Nevada, right? So and obviously on a much larger scale. Um, what is the uh, capacity of the uh, the two XL, um, as you guys call it? What is the capacity um, in terms of power output? And then also, um, if you can describe kind of like in layman's terms, um, what does that power look like in terms of, for example, number of homes uh, that it would power up or, um, yeah, maybe even kind of give us a sense of that. 
Okay, so that's good. You're going to jump into the details. But as the guy was mentioning, the services and products, it doesn't only come with the battery. We're talking about service down to things like auto bidder. And of course, we're going to talk about installation. And so to install them or to construct them, it's about two days. I mean, the time limit is very short. It could differ depending on the actual demographics and the geographics. But at the end of the day, it's very quick. And an installation on the back end could take some time. But as far as the setup, it's pretty much like copy and paste. It's prefabricated to the highest extent. And so once again, that's Tesla's innovation and their process is to make things a little bit more easier when it comes to construction. And the same thing applies to the car factories. Car factories take a long time to build out. Tesla does it around 18 to 16 months. And so that's very short. Usually they're about three years to build. And Tesla takes care of that. Right? They do it themselves. They don't you know, hire it out to a third party like other car manufacturers. So once again, they have a good techniques and good skill set when it comes down to building out and constructing these projects. I'm gonna let this guy continue. Let's get it. Yeah, just to give you an idea, Liam, before I go into the product, just to describe kind of like the size of the mega factory. The size of the mega factory, uh, along with the warehouse that we have, is the size of uh, 29 football fields. Uh, so that's basically the size of the, of the entire mega factory. Uh, the number of employees is equivalent to 33 football teams. So we are familiar with the NFL, and, and, and that is basically it's like having here working the, uh, the NFL has 32 teams. It's like having the, the entire NFL working uh, with us at the mega factory. So definitely an exciting business to be on. Uh, in terms of the, uh, of the product or the mega pack to Excel, number one is the largest storage uh, battery that we can transport in the road. And that's basically why we define and design the size of the, of the mega factory is basically the largest and heaviest that you can transport without breaking the, the roads. Um, number two is in terms of like powering, uh, one mega pack is equivalent to 3.99 megawatt hours. Uh, so this will be equivalent to power around, I mean, around 100, if I take an average around 134 homes uh, for 24 hours, uh, obviously it's energy storage. So we, we work really closely with different sources of, of of renewable energies. So mainly we are capturing the energy to ensure that it's not lost during the hours that there is no sun or wind and basically shifting that energy into the peak hours that are happening on the night to enable that transition to clean energy. So one, one megapack, you said, if I heard you correctly, would power 134 homes? That's correct. For 24 hours? For 24 hours. And that's just one? Yeah, it's just one megapack. Wow, that's pretty good. So when... one megapack, 24 hours, one home. And this is what happened a lot of times people don't understand the electrical grid is that if we have solar, if we have wind, tidal, geothermal, or whatever renewable energies up and running the generation side, right? It generates, it creates the energy, but that energy as of now without batteries is not stored anywhere. I'll give you a good example. Plug in your phone when it has no battery. When it has no battery, you plug it, it will work, right? So plug it into the power system, plug it into the power plug, you're good, you could use it. But once you unplug it and it has no battery, it's done. And so the electrical grid works the same way, meaning that once it generates energy, it's not stored anywhere. It's automatically dispersed to the grid. That's how old it is and ineffective and efficient. So that'd be like having a battery that can or a phone that can only be plugged in and work during while it's plugged in because it has no internal battery to store energy to allow you to be mobile with it and continue to use it. So again, you don't want your house like that. I mean, our houses have been like that and it's worked great for us, but with renewable energies and then also that was complicated for the grid. If we could store energy, that would help a lot. So let's continue. When did um, production of your mega, uh, mega factory here um, later begin? Um, it began in 2021. That's basically when we break ground. Uh, there were, a, like, obviously, it's the construction pace. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I mean, you grew up in Lathrop. Yeah, yeah. This warehouse uh, before used to be a JCPenney warehouse. Uh, it was acquired by, by Tesla. And now we basically transformed this warehouse into the largest uh, storage energy factory in, in North America. Uh, so it's a, like, for the city of Lathrop, I think one of the things that we should be really proud as a, as a community is like, how are we evolving as from from like consumism and retail to actually uh, generate clean energy and enable that transition? What was the, do you know what the timeline was? Uh, you know, once you guys stepped foot um, or basically broke ground, um, transitioning 
what the former use was into actual operation. Yeah. So how they changed the factory and how long that took from where it was when it was just a retail or a warehouse for a retailer and, uh, you know, retailer company, which was JC Penney's. So this is also very interesting, right? So here we go again. You're looking at Tesla and you're like, okay, who cares? You care because, again, it was a failing business or a business that was at least moving out and relocating JC Penney's warehouse. And Tesla was able to come in and build it and actually utilize the building now and be able to TI, tenant improve the building and then hire more people and still put it into good use. So that's a bonus. That's a bonus. Tesla's coming in, creating jobs, taking places that would have been abandoned or vacant and actually putting a good business in there. Now, let's go back to what he's saying now, which is how long did it take to transition from that warehouse for JC Penney's into the factory that we have today? Because it's different, right? The use is different. Still an industrial space. Why well, I invest in industrial real estate, but still a different use now. For the mega factory? Absolutely. So it took us around four to six months to get into production of the first uh, inverter line. Uh, mm -hmm. And then full completion of the mega pack, it took like, uh, almost a, a year uh, because that means that we're basically in this factory we're not just assembling the mega pack it's basically we're building the mega pack from the ground up is is you have your boiling white operation you have your powder coat operation you have the assembly lines the inverter line the battery module line so it's basically we're building the entire it's the first time that we're building the entire uh, product in a in a single factory and we're doing it at a pretty large scale so it requires some time to ramp but if you compare this to the industry in general uh, i'll I feel very confident to say that this has been a, probably one of the weakest and the smallest ramp in Tesla as a company. Yeah. So it's been one of the weakest and smallest or slow, smoothest, excuse me, a ramp and Tesla company. But one of the things I want to point out, as he said, is they're not just assembling. Okay. They're creating from the ground up. That's vertical integration. And that creates a better product for us. Now, some people will argue the battery originates from a different place. But net net at the end of the day, that would phase to be once we start continuing ramping up in operations on making batteries. We're one of the largest battery makers. So once again, you guys are just looking at cars and there's batteries out here that we're producing. And we're not just getting the batteries and just throwing it in our cars. We're actually creating the batteries. And this mega pack is something that they're building from the ground up. So that's very interesting because it's not only a symbol. They're just not assembling it you know, getting the pieces from wherever in this factory, they just assemble them and then they send it out to the customer. You no, know, they're building it from the ground up. And that's good news for us. Vertical integration. I'm going to allow him to continue. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, 12 uh, to 12 months. I mean, that's, that is definitely very quick. Um, 12 months is also very quick. Do you recall um, what major impediments there were um, in really taking over the facility and getting it to um, operational capacity? Uh, more operat operational use, I should say. I won't call it impediments or obstacle. I will call it this part of the normal transition of, of building a factory. So the first thing was like, how do we ensure that we have uh, all the right power uh, for all the automation and new equipment that we were bringing into the factory, ensuring that we have all the facilities like uh, CDA, uh, install chill water, drops, H vacuum system, basically everything that encompasses building a, a factory of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. uh, second is obviously like, now that you have the, the, the building, it's like, how do you bring the equipment, install it, and validate the equipment? One of the very particular challenges of the mega factory is that this is the only factory around the world that is building this product. So this is no easy. Like, I always kind of like preach this to, to my team and, and encourage them. It's like, <laughs> uh, probably around only 1% of the world has the opportunity to work in a company like Tesla. And then out of that 1%, you are the only ones that are building the mega pack product because this is the only factory in the world for Tesla that is building this product. So there is not that much of a benchmark, uh, like less and less from the past. So what is extremely important when you kind of like expose yourself to this type of situations is like, number one, have a very cohesive team that is super dynamic, open to change and adapt. But what is more important, they have the resilience to overcome obstacles. Um, normally the issues that we face uh, in the production lines are things that a lot of times we have never seen in the past. Uh, we have top engineers. Uh, I will say like by far in my entire career, I'm working with the greatest engineers in the world. Uh, a lot of cross-functional teams that partner together. But a lot of times we're facing issues that we have never seen in the past. And it 
And that's very important. The only one in the world that's making this specific product. Talk about being able to get that lead in the market. Now, don't get me wrong. I think CATL also has, you know, this type of product too. But let's just take it at face value, right? Because I think I've seen it once in one of the operations in Australia. But let's say even if they do, that's only two companies now. So it's still competition is not fierce. The competition is not coming because also making a battery factory, it, you know, it's not easy. Making the battery factory and then also manufacturing batteries is not easy. So it's it's not an easy feat and there's no benchmark. So you can't just copy and paste or use examples learned from other companies that failed, much like when we're making the EVs. It's a slightly different product for sure. But there's still a lot of similarities that we could utilize from just even OEMs. But when you're talking about what we're doing with the Mega Pack, it's not much to actually look at as an example. And it requires a cross functional team to rally together to basically look at the things at the lower level of detail, learn from a, like basically trial and piloting things, as in, and basically partner with the right uh, vendors and and, and the right teams to ensure that we can create a, not only a safe product, but with the highest quality and being able to scale it for, to provide it around the world. Well, that's good. Uh, there's certainly a lot, um, a lot you said, and I was taking some notes on some of the things that um, I think we'll definitely cover later on. Um, open to chains and uh, uh, being resilient. That's uh, definitely two things that um, sometimes can be rare. So that's, that's good. I definitely agree. Cause I, I can, I can attest to that, you know, going, going through that, uh, um, you have to be open to change if you're going to grow number one, but also uh, being resilient. So um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, kind of just uh, continuing on, on the, I guess a little more of the technical side of the mega pack. Um, so um, I guess specifically on the uh, customer base, uh, you'd mentioned, I think um, offline before we started the podcast, um, the customer base, um, maybe speak to the customer base and also uh, that you guys provide. And then also the number of uh, mega packs or even projects uh, that you guys have already um, um, got now the pipeline and installed across the world. So we we are currently, I think, in the on the presentation I showed you a map yeah. where we were kind of like showing all the different areas that where the mega pack has been installed. So I'll start with a, a little bit of a history on the on the mega pack to Excel. <laughs> the first project uh, that we installed and that the team is super proud to. to okay, so good. They're going to go over a couple of projects that have already been implemented. So we're going to have a. Uh, case study we're going to have proof of concept when he goes in to explain the projects that are already operational so basically rally around that project was a um, the getting a project in wahoo hawaii so the most important thing is like the mission in which we are all, all working on so the mission for tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy so the what is unique and, and really rewarding around that project is like once uh, the team partner uh, with Renewable Energy and the Mega Pack uh, on Oahu, Hawaii, they were able to shut down the last coal uh, plant in, in Hawaii. So basically, it enabled the entire transition uh, to the use of, of the Mega Packs and ensure that we have clean energy. If you look at the kind of like economics of that, it's basically like you need to transport coal to Hawaii. So, what are all the logistics to ship that into Hawaii? What are all the costs associated uh, yeah. with that? Like burning, uh, basically the, all the processes that required to, to use coal to produce energy. Now we're basically switching all of that to use clean energy to storage in mega packs to be able to satisfy the energy that is required on, on, on Hawaii. So that's just a, an example of, of some of the cool projects that we have. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't have, we have, we have customers that are basically uh, not, not only like getting energy from renewable sources where customers that are using the mega pack for uh, the requirement needs of keeping that storage just to sustain some equipment that they want to ensure that if power goes down they are able to run it and they attach that to the grid uh, we are presence in all like europe uh, asia pacific africa north america mm -hmm. south america so this is basically expanding uh, around the world and, and it just feels great to be part of this uh, great opportunity to see how that idea and, and that basically factory that was empty producing one mega pack in, in a week is able to scale at this ramp and, 
And what I like, this is. And then, then let me just slow him down because he's going ham. <laughs> but I want to show you an example of the fact, or at least the project that he was talking about in Hawaii. Here we go. They're set to help keep Hawaii running too. All part of the Aloha State's push to have green energy make up 100% of their power supply by 2045. Using what Tesla claims is the most advanced technology of its kind in the world, they may just be able to get there. The battery system spans eight acres of land on Hawaii's Oahu Island, near the capital of Honolulu. It will utilize more than 150 of Tesla's megapack battery systems, each about the size of a shipping container. The facility will replace the state's last coal plant, which shut down in 2022. Here's how it'll work. Hawaii's tropical climate makes it an ideal tourist destination, and those sunny skies are also perfect for solar energy. Almost too perfect. The state's previous grid setup didn't have the capacity to store all the power that was being generated from solar panels. So the power was being generated a lot from solar, but it didn't have the ability to store it. As the guy said earlier, it's the first time this product has been created. So therefore, we're going to be able to store it now. So we don't have massive amount of waste. We got solar, but we ain't got no way to store it. So much of that unused cleaner electricity just went to waste. This new Tesla battery project will help reduce that amount of unused renewable energy by nearly 70%. It will be able to match the output of the old coal plant and also have the ability to store extra power in case of blackouts caused by severe weather or natural disasters. Hawaiian Electric says this will save people around 28 cents each month, but Tesla believes it's just scratching the surface with this tech and its cost-saving potential. It's the first time a standalone battery site has generated power at this scale, and its success will be critical to getting more clean energy up and running in Hawaii. Perfect. So that was an example of what the guy was talking about. So let's go back to the interview and we can learn more about. This is, this is public. You can look at the earnings calls in Tesla, but uh, last year we were able to deploy 14.5 gigawatt hours, which is basically 125% um, percent growth compared to 2022. And what I'm super proud of the Mega Factory team is like, it's, it's hard to ramp up that high. But mm -hmm. when you are thinking in terms of like ramping to those levels, while at the same time having 50% of your factory under construction, that is, that is just remarkable. And the only way you, you, you reference back resilience of the team, yeah. honestly, is, is ownership, is resilient, is earning the trust, is being like fully dedicated, and it requires a great mission to rally all around those ones. I think it's just not like something that is personal. It's like, like a dream that all the people that work here share. Yeah. And, and that's very interesting what he said. He said... We were able to grow 125% or 50% of the factory still under construction. Like, what are we talking about, guys? <laughs> Woo, man. Uh, the people at Tesla, it, I mean, like, when people just say you invest in Elon, it's like you are ignoring the whole team and the culture at Tesla as a company. Like, you're just underestimating the team. Tesla, yeah, Elon is amazing, okay? But it's not only Elon. If Elon had a bunch of normies dropping the ball and fumbling, then it don't matter how cool Elon is. But again, that good leadership in conjunction with great supporters, great normies, makes an amazing company. So it, again, Elon gets a lot of the praise, and rightfully so. And he also contributes a lot of praise to the employees, but everybody skips over the employees and focuses on Elon. And this is what I'm talking about. A team's been able to grow that department 125% and 50% of the factory still under construction. And I think like the unique thing is like when everybody shares the, dream, uh, the same dream, they typically come through. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident to say that Mega Factory is currently on track uh, to achieve the design capacity of 40 gigawatt hours. On, on that note, um... Uh, so we're in actually March 1st today, right? 1st of March in, in 2024 already. The year's definitely going by really quick. So um, is there a projected timeline in which uh, the mega factory here in Lathrop will reach capacity of 40 gigawatt hours? The goal is to reach out by the end of the year. End of the year. And our goal as a team is not only we're going to reach out 40 gigawatt hours, like we're going to do that 
while creating a world-class environment. And what we define as world-class environment is like, uh, there is one philosophy of management here and it's around Sparks. Uh, this is deployed across all Tesla and Sparks stands for safety, people, accuracy, rate, and cost. And they go in the, in the same priority, like in that order for priority. So first of all, we want to ensure that everybody comes and lives safe from work. Number two, we want to focus on the people, uh, engaging with them, not only like on creating a great environment for them to work, but as well developing them and enable their professional careers. And you wonder why Tesla employees never unionize. It's in the sparks, baby. The sparks. Safety, people, accuracy. What was it? Rank is something cost. I don't know. Let's see what he says. Three, we want to produce quality product while doing that. And that doesn't mean like just producing 40 gigawatt hours of mega packs. It's basically producing a mega pack the right way uh, the first time that we are actually assembly done. Uh, then enabling the rate and making it cost effective uh, for our customers. So while we're going over this entire transition yeah. and learning, it's important that we not only focus on the what, but why we're doing it and how to do it. Got it. So, um, going back to uh, the customer. So, um, uh, do you, do you know the number of, um, projects that you guys have done per date, um, in terms of, uh, the mega packs? Uh, that information is available. Oh, okay. uh, normally to give you some uh, background, like these projects are, is, is not, we have teams and field services that are deployed around the world, depending on the projects. Um, it's not like we have a tracker of like X amount of megapacks are, are getting installed per day because it's different than running a production line. Uh, normally it's like there is partnership between our customers and the particular countries and the regulations in which they, they are basically are mapping the entire project, um, like, like going over everything that takes uh, from, from the time that you have the land to actually installing yeah. the project. And while they are going over those processes, different countries, different cities, the regulation change. So the projects can like, the time of the project mm -hmm. can change based on that permitting. Uh, but we always uh, have a kind of like a healthy pipeline of projects that, that we're working at the mega factory. I think is if you just basically walk the yard, yeah, uh, you can see like the amount of mega packs that are getting a stage there that are ready to ship. And in each one of those mega packs, they have option codes that are tailored to a specific customers. So it's not like they are waiting there to be bought. Uh, they already have an owner and, and we're waiting for the, for the right time for their shipment. So by the time that they get there, we can quickly deploy them and, and, and the customer can start experience the benefits of installing a mega pack. Well, let me ask a question that um, I'm sure obviously you'll be able to answer as a plant manager. What is the production rate of uh, the mega packs right now? What does that look like? Obviously you guys are still wrapping up uh, the goal, like you said, at the end of the year is to get to 40 gigawatt uh, hours. Uh, what is the, what is the uh, production rate in terms of being able to put a mega pack together and out the door? Um, is it a day, an hour? What, is that, what does that look like? So we have different, like you have the entire cycle time and you have back time, but in terms of like, for the purpose of answering your question in terms of magnitude as a site, uh, last year we were able to validate our capacity to 20 gigawatt hours. And now that's a lot. And once again, the goal is 40, but let's go back to what he was basically saying about building out the factory. Now, all right, so once you build out a project, right? So most factories are just like, hey, we could produce as many vehicles on a yearly basis. But to measure the projects on an industry like this, it's a little bit different because the customers or the clients, they have different proposals. The project might increase or shrink depending on permitting, rezoning. There's a lot of planning that goes into it besides just the end product that you saw in Hawaii, right? So it can't just be, hey, we're going to produce a bunch of packs and you're just going to be buying them like you buy the car. It's going to be done entirely different because there's more nuances at, on the ground. You have to coordinate with the customers and the clients about their projects. And then, of course, they send the experts there to install it and et cetera, get them up to date, get them trained on how to use the interfaces. And so it's not as simple as just purchasing a bunch of cars and driving them or purchasing some shirts from Tesla <laughs> uh, or FSD. Uh, each project is different. And so each project needs to be addressed as said. It's kind of like, you know, if I was making houses, they're like, yo, how many projects are you going to be, you know, doing on a yearly basis? And it's like, well, it depends on the developers, like what projects, you know, 
it can go from we plan to do a thousand units and we had to shrink it to about 800 units. And so things can change like this, but you have to work with the client and then the client's working with the county or the city or the state or the nation. And so there's all these smaller details that of course are going to change what we're doing and how many projects we're going to do in a year. And like we, this is publicly disclosed. This, this facility was designed to drive 40 gigawatt hours. Uh, you have the opportunity to saw uh, some of the construction that is going on and, and the new assembly lines that, that are there. And, and basically we're on track to, to wrap up the year with uh, achieving the, the ramp to the 40 gigawatt hours. Got it. Um, question on uh, material. I know obviously like, for example, we're in obviously 2024, well past the era of COVID that we all went through. Um, that started in 2020 and lasted really for a couple of years. Um, I guess, well, you guys uh, started in 2019, you said, right? Oh, 2021. 2021. Okay. So that was kind of really in the mid, in the midst of uh, uh, COVID really. So were there any, um, I guess two part questions, were there any supply chain issues that you guys um, went through for the mega packs and uh, kind of looking ahead, maybe in potential lessons learned um, would that same, if roadblocks that you guys encountered, uh, would that be encountered again, would you say, or have you guys? Good questions. Roadblocks, you know, that you did get into during the pandemic and then also going into the future uh, what could be potential roadblocks or supply constraints navigated that process work even the disruption that the world uh, went through in terms of supply chain uh yeah what, what did you guys uh, experience during that time so that's a that's a great question i think uh, all the companies not only like tesla learned a lot during the during the COVID times and as you're aware there was a, a shortage of power electronics uh, globally uh, mainly chips so that is that is one of the issues that not just us but and give me a second because i want to show something let's see this is 23 26 lab learn a lot during the during the covid times and did that process work Even i want to show you guys that the world uh, went through in terms of supply chain uh yeah what, what did you guys uh experience during that time so that's a that's a great question now he's like that's a great question but i, I want you guys to look at this Look at the level of excitement that is on this guy's face when he's just asking, you know, good questions, right? When someone's asking him good questions, you can see the passion in his face. You know, it's not like, you know, you watch another video and it's just some manager and he's just a talking head, but you can see the excitement. He's like, oh, let me tell you about this. Like he's, these are the type of people, these are the type of people that you need inside the company, right? Those ones that are committed dedicated to the core, your core, my core, the Marine Corps. So you could just see it on his face, the level of excitement. And this is why I'm telling most people, Tesla is different. Question. I think uh, all the companies, not only like Tesla, learn a lot during the, during the COVID times. And as you're aware, there was a, a shortage of power electronics uh, globally, uh, mainly chips. So that is, that is one of the issues that not just us, but companies in general face. So uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, we, we did experience some shortages of, of raw materials, but our supply chain team is like super solid team. They were able to quickly engage with the right uh, suppliers and, and build a strategy to overcome the shortage, uh, basically catch up on the ramp. And currently we have, I'm, I'm confident to say that we don't have any uh, raw materials uh, limitations for the, for the scale of the mega pack. Uh, we have learned to prepare for that. And, and Tesla, as part of one of their core principles, is like we're always like innovating and trying to be vertically integrated. So Megapack is not the exception for, for that philosophy. So we're constantly, number one, partnering with the right vendors and, and ensuring that we procure the, the raw materials that have the right quality uh, to meet our customer expectations. And what I would say meet to exceed the customer expectations and be that market leader. Uh, but not only that, it's like, how do we learn how to do it so we can have kind of like full control of our destiny? Got it. So you, you said the, uh, you mentioned the word vertical integrated. What does that mean exactly? Vertical integrated is basically you, you are self-sufficient in terms of like your entire supply chain. So if, if being vertically integrated um, will be like, you are not relying on a particular supplier of, of raw materials. So there are, uh, there were some news like about the, the, some of the, uh, new factories or uh, new businesses that Tesla uh, 
is acquiring or is building or is designing or building from the ground up. So uh, we're always like a big confidence. Pe Megapack is a great example. Yeah, yeah. Like if you look at the prior version of the Megapack, we used to like kind of like outsource the, the enclosure of the Megapack. Okay. Now we're basically vertically integrated. We're building the enclosure from the ground up uh, here. We are painting the, the enclosure here. We're ensuring that we take care of, of all the processes. And some of the benefits for that is, is like you can control and ensure that you can leverage all of your mechanisms and processes uh, mm -hmm. that are in place to provide the right quality and have full control and autonomy of, of your destiny. So you mentioned um, kind of touching back, and that, that's really good. I think that's definitely uh, key, obviously, to any company if they could basically make um, and design their own products. That way there is no um, supply chain issues down the road. Like, you know, like you said, a lot of companies uh, encountered during um, – during the COVID area, a couple of years. So um, is that something that you guys are aiming toward or you guys are almost already there in terms of being completely 100% vertically integrated, as you said? Hey, we're aiming towards uh, as as the technology changes, as like, products are constantly getting. And we're just going to stop because before he gets into that, I want to show you guys an example of what we're talking about when it goes to that vertical integration. This is November uh, 2023, but there's more updated ones. But this is Tesla's lithium refinery plant in Corpus, Corpus Christi in Texas. And so as you can see, this is the vertical integration part where if we have that refinery, then when it comes down to lithium ion, then we can have that raw material also. We're going to be processing that raw material. And so that's how you vertically integrate. And a lot of battery mac makers don't have this, don't don't have the refinery for the raw materials that they utilize to manufacture the batteries. And so just growth, vertical integration constantly being built out around Tesla's business is the primary example of how we look to reduce costs, cutting expenses, and being able to increase our bottom line. But I'm going to go back to the video and allow him to continue. We're getting uh, innovation while constantly learning. Uh, there is always like, uh, ways to improve. So, so through those learning processes and cycles, there is always like great ideas that come from our workforce, from our engineers, from from our designers, and and basically as well as the industry is evolving. Like yeah. things are constantly changing. So I would say like the the only the only constant is change, especially in this type yeah. of business. Uh, that is that is basically just scaling. So it's, it's super important that we'll always stay humble, that we are always open to learn and, and we continue like chasing that, um, that continuous improvement mentality. As you um, um, stated earlier, the mission of Tesla um, is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, right? So on that note, how does the Lathrop facility, the mega factory, if you will, um, accomplish that? That's a great question. So I, I often... All right, so I'm going to let him finish that, and we're going to cut there because it's 30 minutes. It's over an hour, and this is going up to be about 45 minutes. So I'm going to let him finish, answer this one, and then I'm going to show uh, updated drone footage of the lithium ion, ion factory in Texas, Texas, and then we'll end out on that. Thing get get asked that question, and, and that's something that I, as a leader of the mega factory, I'm constantly building in the DNA of every single person that works here. And, and this is the reason why is I think you have worked for a, for a, for companies. I have worked for multiple companies yeah. and the main reason why uh, people stay with a company or, or in general in their life, people stay committed to a particular goal or principle is because they have a clear vision and clear mission of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. So accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy is that easy. No. So I often explain this to my, to like my entire team in, in, in four different aspects, aspects. Number one is the cathedral model, which I will explain in a few. Number two is taking the driver's seat. Three, I show them a, a picture of the Mount Everest and we have a mountain to climb. And number four is, is sustainable. And, and, and here's why. So the cathedral model is basically ensuring that every single employee that works here from the highest level to the associate that is closer to the product, they have a clear understanding of what are we trying to achieve and why we want to do it. Number two is like, what is the specific role on us achieving that goal? Number three is like, how do we measure it? Yeah. There is nothing uh, more 
uh, depressing, I'll say, that working for something in a day and walking out and not knowing if you're winning or you're losing. It's true. That's good. Yeah. And, and number four is ensuring that we, we, we learn as a team and we create that learning organization that is going to continue driving improvements. And, and basically, the cathedral model, it has some like, purpose behind it. It's basically uh, anyone can assembly a, a mega pipe, right? Like the function of like doing a fast tenor, okay. adding some, some paint or sealant. If they're properly trained, they can do it. But our mission as leaders here in Tesla is to ensure that people are doing it because they strongly believe in that dream and in that mission. And how do I measure that? If you will ask, like, how, how, do, you, how do you know that, yeah. that your associates feel that way? There are multiple mechanisms, like having round tables, like uh, showing appreciation for our employees, having multiple ways to connect with them. Like every day, like this is not the type of factory that they won't see Javier, like you were present there, like yeah. people know me, I, I'm constantly working the line, but we the most important uh, key indicator here is like the impact that that is going to happen on their families. So the only homework that I leave when, I, when I'm teaching this uh, cathedral model to, to my associates, to our process technicians, to our managers, to our leaders is um, I, my, my goal here is that when they go back home and they're having dinner with their families and they are, or they are gathering with their friends or their beloved ones, they can feel proud, chest up, yeah. and share like, what are we trying to do? How their day was? What are the great things that we're doing at Tesla? Because that truly is what makes a change in the community. Like we're talking about later here. Imagine yeah. two people can be doing the exact same task. Imagine the first picture of someone just like being like, oh, I, I was just installing this fast all day and not having that clear vision. What's going to be the impact on their family and their community towards the second person that knows how what they are doing connects to that end goal vision and how is that impacting their family, how their child are going to become and with that, we're starting some like family tours and getting involved uh, the entire community, not only the employees that work here, to, uh, to basically create that engagement of, of what we're doing is not like based on profit, it's based because we're truly trying to change the world together. The driver's seat is, is full ownership. Uh, despite of these issues, a lot of them are cross-functional. Mm -hmm. uh, every single leader at the mega factory understand that they need to take the driver's seat. On driver's seat but i dig the first one just having people understand the vision of where we're going and not just saying hey well i just tighten some fasters and that's my job but no hey i'm tightening some fasters because we're moving in sustainable energy and we're going to secure the energy grid you know keeping this lights on is one thing by paying the bills but i'm really the definition of keeping the lights on by fixing this energy grid and that's hit different that's a whole different perspective than just saying, hey, I work at a factory to keep my lights on. Like, I work at a factory that keeps all the lights on. Sit on those issues and rally around the teams and focus on the solutions and work as a team on achieving them. And the Mount Everest reverse back to, is, is that easy? No. Can a lot of people do it? No. Yeah. And that is the reason why we're here, right? Because it's, it's not easy to do. And it requires resilience. Uh, it requires dedication. It requires to enter the trust and all of those values to drive it. And we want to be those uh, shepherds that are not only like focusing on what needs to happen, but how to do it and have the emotional uh, intelligence and, and the rational maturity to, to navigate the teams through, through those obstacles. Um, and last but not least, it needs to be sustainable, right? Like it, needs to be, it doesn't have to be Javier dependent, uh, all dependent. It's because we're truly creating that culture where, where, it's, where it's sustainable for the long term because everybody's engaged in the process. Yeah. Perfect. Everybody's engaged in the process and it's a great process. So I'm going to take down the video because I'm definitely going to finish it and I also leave it in the description so somebody else could watch it. Here's another update of what I was talking about and shout outs to the lithium plant that's going to be in Texas. There's an update. There's an overview. So it's coming along. You know, it's not finished. Nowhere near finishing but it's very extensive. It's not simple. A refinery is going to be one of the best. And there's not going to be somebody else doing better than him. And shout out to him. He got the cyber truck. But once again, a patch of raw land not being utilized in America. Now it's going to be utilized. And this is what I'm talking about. When you invest in a company, you're really investing in the United States of America. You're really investing in your said country where the business operates. And that company, you'll say, well, what is the difference that I'm doing when I purchase stock or when I own this company? And you could look at this. You can go drive this. You, you could go drive by this and see this. And if you see the before and after, you could say, wow, you know, this is what I'm backing up. The sentiment amongst the market, like if the stock went to zero, right, the company would be in some deep doo-doo. But 
with the support of shareholders and also Elon Musk and the people at the company, which also own shares too. We're all in it together from retail shareholders to employees who get paid through stock options and stock awards. Like they own this too. It's democratizing capitalism to its highest extent. And uh, I don't have to work at Tesla in order to be a part of Tesla. And neither does any shareholder from one share to 30,000 to 20,000. It doesn't matter. Like you are part of the company, just like these employees are a part of the company also. And they own parts of the company. It's not like they're just working. And again, just saying, hey, I twiddle, you know, some fuses at, at the plant and that's it. No, I make things happen. And as you could see, an example, they're driving down a what? A dirt road. There's going to be actually a real road, right? It looks kind of dirt-ish. Don't know if it's actually a dirt road. But, you know, once the plant is up and running, that's going to be an actual, maybe even a bigger road. It's going to be assembled. It's going to be building out infrastructure. So there's going to be roads, electricity that goes there. All this land is going to be utilized for the refinery process. And this is what's happening. And this is what a company can do. So that's why I say when you guys think about investing and you think about what you're going to buy, it's really dope for companies that focus on America and build back stronger and better factories, plants, refineries. All of this is being built back stronger, better than ever by Tesla. So this is what I'm saying. Tesla is the most patriotic company. Con, uh, company in the country because even with apple you don't see this right we got a headquarter it's one of the biggest factories in the world and apple has a big headquarters and it's just a big old circle with playgrounds outside but right here we're getting down to the crooks of creating innovation and we're changing something and we're vertically integrated most of our assembly is not somewhere in china it's in the united states of america in texas specifically the motherland, the homeland, the fatherland, Texas. So everyone hates Tesla, but I wanted to provide this. And so people could just understand a little bit more about the batteries in the description. I'm going to provide the link to the rest of the video. It's about 30 more minutes left in it. So you can go watch it yourself and go understand a little bit more about the factory in California that's producing the mega packs. And as you saw from the quarter two 2024 report, um, we have grown and we got that 9.4 gigawatts an hour being produced. One of the best quarters out there. And we got a bright future. Everyone loves to hate Tesla, but I'm just here stating facts. We all.